Welcome to the year of 2209, where cities are huge and heavily over-industrialized. In contrast to the high-tech societies, the dreams of April Rhine are quite the opposite. They are full of fairy tale like creatures, talking trees, dragons, imaginative landscapes. Everything seems so absurd that it just has to be a dream. And on top of that, she often ends up only dressed in her underwear. I'm in my undies. That's so not appropriate. But as if her dreams aren't weird enough, some strange things are going on lately while April isn't sleeping at all. Who's there? Okay, that was not a dream, I think. Some elements of her dream pop out of thin air. While waitressing at the French cafe, April witnesses as a flute-playing mole person jumps through a jukebox. Fortunately, she's not going crazy, since she's not the only one who saw it. But everyone, except April, denies the incident. A lot of people who were here last night refused to admit that they saw what they saw. Or they blame it on hidden holographic projectors or drugs in the coffee. What's even more disturbing is that Cortez, April's weird Latin American friend, seems to know about her dreams. You are afraid of them. You even fear your dreams may be real. Who told you about my nightmares? No one. I can tell from looking into your eyes. I see the ghosts that haunt you. He claims to know the truth. So to shed light into the dark, he he just opens a portal for us to enter Acadia since April Ryan is a shifter. Hold on a second. This needs some serious explanation. Luckily, at the other side of our shift, we find some kind of monk. He tries to give an overview. You see, the Earth as we know is only half the world. We live in a parallel universe. One world, the one we in April know, is the industrial world which is called Stark, dominated by science and logic. The other world is called Arcadia and is based on chaos, magic and fantasies. As April finds out, the vast majority of both worlds doesn't know about the existence of their counterworld, or if they do, they claim it's only a fairy tale. People from Stark don't know about and don't understand magic, whereas Acadians don't understand the concept of science and technology. You know what? It doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense here. Magic, alien creatures, parallel worlds. I don't believe in those things. I don't believe in fairy tales. Nevertheless, April and Ryan is forced to understand both worlds. She's told that she's the chosen one. You are a shifter, April and the power to travel between worlds is within you. It seems very confusing, but at this point the whole secret is revealed in a rather long story. I try my best, so hold on tight and keep watching. A long time ago, there was only one world. There was no split between Stark and Acadia. Unfortunately, the coexistence of science and magic didn't get along well. Some people abuse magic for selfish reasons and for thirst of power. Earth was flooded with chaos. This was the time the dragons showed up. Dragons! They are called Drake Kin, and they are aliens! They lived on Earth for untold generations. They are only four in total on Earth, but they stayed put until the total disaster was about to take over the world. One of those alien dragons founded the Sentinel to watch over the balance. They consisted of six magicians, six scientists, and the Drake Kin himself. The Sentinel was ordered to split up science and magic, chaos and order, into two worlds, Stark and Acadia. To focus the powers of all members of the Sentinel, they built a tower. The Drake Kin used a disc which was forged with the fire of their alien world to channel the flow of magic and science. A smaller copy of the disc acts as a key to the tower. The Drake Kin split up the key in four pieces and handed them to the six Sentinel members of Arcadia, who had to hold them in safe custody. In addition, there are four stones, which the key needs to be complete. Those four stones were given to each of the dragons, two in Arcadia, two in Stark. Since the Divide, each world is visible to the other only by way of dreams. A guardian was chosen to watch over the balance and redistribute chaos and logic wherever it was needed. As a guardian, the soul is separated from the body for a thousand years. Thus, every one thousand years, there must be a new guardian, a new chosen one. 
As time went by, a movement started to rise which wanted a reunification. The so-called Vanguard tried to persuade each chosen one to control the Guardian in an attempt of a reunification. But each time, they failed. As of today, the current 12th Guardian is already 200 years overdue. The body and soul could no longer be separated. So, the disc broke and the Guardian was forced back into his old body. The tower is left unattended since then. As you may have already guessed, the Sentinel sees April Ryan as the new chosen one. This is the point where the longest journey of April really begins. After learning the unbelievable truth in Acadia, April finally is able to shift back to Stark with the help of a pocket watch from the art-obsessed Cortez. April obtained the watch from Brian Westhouse, an old friend of Cortez. Back in Stark, Cortez explains what needs to be done. Four things. We must find the Lost Guardian, we must locate the gateway to his realm, and the disc that is the key to his tower, and we must do what we can to curtail and defeat the Vanguard. To obtain some more information about the Vanguard, April has to help a criminal homeless boy named Vernon Hughes, who, who just knows people. Need to find out? Alright, here's the thing. I got a friend who might be able to help you out. Great! Hold on. Before I use up my favors with him, I need you to do me a favor in return. Probably even help yourself out at the same time. Fair enough. What do I have to do? Easy. Break into the Newport Police Department computer archives. Get me some information on my family. Destroy my criminal record and get the hell out of there. Preferably alive. So, April breaks in the police station, tricks some policemen, makes it to the server room and does what Vern asked for. Simple as that. Whoa, I think I just killed Warren. Oh well, he's just gonna have to, uh, live with that. One upside of the break-in, April found some encrypted data files in the police records on the Church of Voltec, which is the Stark name of the Vanguard. After returning the favor to Warren, he sends April to the Hacker Flipper. I'm the Flipper! The Flipper! He is able to decrypt the files and reveals that the leader of the Vanguard in Stark is Jacob McAllen. We will go to war, if that's what it takes. Obvious Hitler complex, real Nazi wannabe. This is heavy, dangerous shit you got here, and I love it. His right-hand man is Gordon Halloway, a guy whose personality was split into chaos and order by the Vanguard. Split in half in some spiritual way. One part chaotic, the other pure logic. Sounds pretty familiar. Turns out the headquarters of the Vanguard is linked to MTI. Malkuth Technologies Incorporated. Big guys. Almost as big as Bokamba Mercer. MTI is located at a high society district you are only able to enter with the top level ID. In order to obtain a fake ID from Flipper, April returns a favor. Would you consider alternative forms of payment for a fake ID? Sorry, Chiquita, that urge disappeared with my little legs. No! Oh, not that! God forbid! More like a, a favor or something you need. Don't think I need it. Whoa! God! Ah, the anti-grav control unit is fried like fried taters, brainiac. Ah, it'll be gone, gone, gone for a good in a few days. Therefore, April organizes an anti-gravity control unit for Flipper's floating chair by cleaning up an air traffic accident. I saw this on an episode of MacGyver 2200. Unfortunately, the fake ID will take some time. So how soon can you have the ID ready? Ah, a couple of days. In the meantime, April opens a shift while dreaming. Back in Acadia, April learns about four magical species. This is after talking to some people and reading some books. <laughs> really, you have to read some in-game books. They are just a few pages though, but you have to read them. What all the magical creatures April learned about have in common is that they share stories about a savior who can restore the balance. April decides to visit the Elation first. This species lives at the island of Elias. An old sailor promised April to get her on a ship if she could get his bird back, which she lost in a game of cups. So April beats the cup handler by using a magnetic screwdriver. A piece of logic and technology an Acadian cannot understand. That's... that's correct, but... that's... You used magic, didn't you? 
You used your magic wand. Nah, your amulet didn't light up, did it? No, but... But... It's impossible! We trade our screwdriver, uh, I mean magic wand, for the talking bird. Wait a second. Did the old man send you to get me? I guess he did. My name's April. Oh, God, is there no escape? I mean, not that I like being cooped up in a cage for gamblers to gawk at and children to spit at all day, but give me a break. It's better than being locked away in a stinking chest. Thanks a whole bunch for rescuing me, April. So were you always just Bird? Or did you have a better name? No. It's always been Bird. My full name is that damn Bird. No, we could board the ship. But unfortunately, there is no wind. An evil alchemist used a spell to stop all winds. Since we really want to go to that island, we now have to beat an evil alchemist. On our way, we find the talking bird which already ran away from the old sailor. He locked him in a treasure box and lost him again in a game of cups. April calls him Tro, who becomes our sarcastic companion from now on. Next we stumble across the Cribbler, who wants to eat us. Clearly, this whole situation resembles the fairy tale Hansel and Gretel, with an old witch who eats children for breakfast. The witch also reminds me of Gollum with the hissing noise and her posture. Oh dear, what have we here? This stew isn't good enough to stuff. To serve a guest as plump, as well built and delicious, as honored as you, my dear. Before we escape, we rescue another magical creature. It's one of the mole persons we saw in the Fringe Cafe. Its species is called Banda. Oddly, they all have strange names. What's your name? Bandu Utamatuta Uyatan Ayama Binaort. That's a little difficult for me to remember. How about I call you Bandu Uta? After killing the Cribbler, the enemy of the Banda, April is kindly invited and celebrated. In gratitude for the victory, the Banda give April one of the key pieces to the Guardian's Tower. Back on our route to the alchemist Ropa Clax, we end up in his levitating castle, where April has to master a magical maze with moving stairs. Finally, we have to beat an evil sorcerer with something beyond his comprehension. Something that is pure logic. A calculator. With a vial full of wind potion from Opaclag's castle, we are finally ready to set sails. But Murphy's Law strikes back. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Of course, April runs into a massive storm while in the middle of an ocean. Other people would change course and try to avoid the storm. But not April Ryan. Nope. She navigates the ship full speed ahead into the heart of the chaos storm. As the ship sinks, the crew abandons April from their lifeboat for her reckless behavior, so she ends up trapped at some floating pieces of the destroyed ship in the middle of nowhere. At least her sidekick Tro is still around. Do you know what happened to the crew? As far as I know, they got away in the lifeboat. There was a lifeboat? One of those magic fold-up types, yeah. I guess they forgot all about me. I think the captain said something like, I let the wench drown and justice be done! <laughs> but uh, I could have been wrong. Worst things happen at sea, a saying that truly applies as April is pulled down the ocean by mermaid-like creatures. It turns out she was kidnapped by the Merim, an aquatic species. April is held captive in an air bubble where she finds instructions at the wall for creating magic tools, which allow April to breathe underwater and to talk with the creatures of the sea. It's a drawing of a man, a human, sticking a strange polyp-shaped object into his mouth. Ugh! In the next drawing, he seems to be able to breathe underwater. Convenient, if somewhat radical. It just happens that she uncovers an ancient cave with engravings, which prove that the Elation, today's enemy of the Merim, are in fact related to each other. They share common ancestors, which came to Earth with the trike kin. Oh my god! It turns out the Merim came to Earth inside a type of spaceship from another planet. They're aliens? This discovery convinced the Queen of the Merim that April has to be the Water Stiller, the foretold savior of the Merim who reunites them with the Elation people. You are the Water Stiller. You are prophecy. We will follow your directions and fulfill our destiny. 
Finally, April is brought to her initial destination, the island of Elias. But to meet the winged Alations, she needs to overcome some obstacles since their city is not accessible via foot. So we just use another potion from Opa Clark's castle to float to the entrance. This impresses the Alations such that they think April might be the Windbringer, the one who brings strength back to the weak Alation. You flew across the chasm. You don't have wings, but still, you fly like the Alation. Believe me, I'm as shocked as you are. Are you the Windbringer? But to prove that she is the chosen one from the prophecy, she has to answer some questions. Elations love to tell stories. If so, you must prove that you are of the Elation. There are four tales from the four corners of the world that you must know by heart. And therefore, April has to learn about the four tales where she really has to pay attention. Only after answering all the questions right, she is allowed to talk to the teller, the leader of the winged relations. The teller is convinced that April is the one from the prophecy. I'm the Windbringer. I know you are. <laughs> it's strange to me to hear those words spoken. So April managed to bring both the Elations and the Meron back together. She's the Chosen One, the Water Stiller and the Windbringer. In return, April receives the second piece of the key from the two species. The stone is now whole, Windbringer, and the Elation and the Meron will once again be as one. You may take it with you. Finally, April is allowed to talk to one of the four dragons who can only tell us Your question has already been answered. That is all I will tell you. Your journey began with an answer. It is only now that you know the question. That's so not helpful, but thank you. Kindly, he hands us one of the four stones the key needs to fully function. Next, he brings us to the ship of the Dark People, who are giving April the third piece of the key just for telling them who she is. I'm the Windbringer. I'm the Water Stiller. I'm April Bondu Mbata of the Banda and the Venar Kangang La. I'm a shifter. I will someday become the 13th Guardian, the Protector of the Balance. And I'm April Ryan. This is who I am. Yes, that is who you are, and you are a wave. They also hand us a stellar map to find the gateway of the Guardian's realm. Everybody's just waiting around for me to show up, so that they can give me stuff. Who knew adventuring was going to be this easy? Back to the harbor, April has to flee from an evil vortex of chaos. Under pressure, she is able to open a new shift. In Stark, she is also chased by the Vanguard, so April shifts again. In Acadia, she receives the final piece of the key from Abnaxious, a species that can see the future, past and present at its will, but doesn't understand the concept of only living in the present. Here, this was the stone of the Venar entrusted to me. I was to take this to Mercuria and there hold embassy until the Kanang La will come to take it from me. Since Abnaxious is a clairvoyant, April doesn't have to prove anything in return. After the long journey, April has all pieces of the key. With a forging statue, she is able to blend all four pieces together. But April is not given a minute's rest. She is attacked by an army of chaos, so she just shifts again. To be able to shift at her will, April practices with a shift to her dream from the very beginning with a talking tree and dragon. I did it! On my own, I did it! From the dragon, she obtains the second stone for the key. Take my blue eye, the crystal. You need it. No, the only things that are still missing are the two stones from the dragons in Stark. Since quite some time has passed, the fake ID she ordered from Flipper is ready by now. Where you been, man? I've been holding on to this for a week now. Yeah, a week. Because Flipper is a hacker and a badass nerd, April asks him to decipher the stellar map, which again will take some time. So, in the meantime, we try to infiltrate the headquarters of the Vanguard. By pretending to deliver a pizza, April makes it to the office of Jacob McAllen, the head of the Vanguard. Turns out it was not the best idea to run into the central office of her enemy open-handed. Uh-oh. 
<gasps> Therefore, April is imprisoned in a strange lab of the Vanguard and is forced to hand over the key and the precious two stones. McAllen already had the remaining two stones. Fortunately, Cortez comes to her rescue. During the epic fight with McAllen, both reveal their true identity. They both are the dragons of Stark. He's gone. They all die. God damn! I can't. Everybody I love dies. Everybody I. With McAllen and Cortez dead, April is on her own. She takes back the complete key with all the stones from the strange lab and heads to Flipper. Unfortunately, Flipper was shot by Gordon Halloway, the assistant of McAllen. Oh my god, what happened to you? <coughs> they shot me. They took the fing map. Literally, with his last words, Flipper manages to explain the deciphered stellar map just before he dies. They took it with them, everything, but I... I made a copy. <coughs> Over there on the screen. The entrance to the Guardian's realm is at a space station called Morningstar. You okay, Flipper? Flipper! To get there, April signs up to become a space colonist which have a layover at the Morning Star. We do have a ship leaving this evening with colonists bound for Bukamba 8, and that does stop at the Morning Star. But I'd suggest you go through our pamphlets. Sign me up for... what was it? Bukamba 8? That's where I want to go. And I have to remind you that if you choose not to board your ship this evening, you will have committed a corporate offense, and you will be subject to imprisonment. And a nice day to you too. At the space station, she frees the imprisoned Lost Guardian and enters the gate to the Guardian's realm, which is in between worlds. But of course, she is followed by Halloway. In the interdimensional world, April needs to prove that she is worthy to enter the tower by mastering three trials. First, she has to defeat the Chaos Vortex with magic, which she can with another potion from Opaclax Castle. They turn out to be very helpful. As a second trial, she needs to face her deepest fear. So she's brought back to her childhood where she has to face her stepfather. She feared that he doesn't love her, but she manages to forgive him. I forgive you. You do? Yes, I forgive you for everything. I forgive you. I forgive you, Daddy. The last trial is just to cross an insurmountable barrier. She even consulted Crow in this matter. The Guardian's Tower is floating over the Well of Making, which is separated from April just by... by nothing. Just tell me what you saw. Nothing. Nothing? As in nothing out of the ordinary? No, as in nothing at all. The absence of anything. Below the fog, there was nothing. It was terrifying. Until you've seen what nothing looks like, you won't be able to fully appreciate something anything at all. I used to hate this blue sand. I mean, blue sand. What the heck? Now, though, I love it. It's sand and it's blue. It's something. Not like that. Nothing down there. It was freaky. At this point, she needs to prove her deductive skills. So she asks Crow to fly to the well of making and throw some of the water into the nothingness. Hence, nothing becomes something. Arriving at the tower, it doesn't accept her arrival, so the last guardian helps to activate the elevator. This is where Gordon Halloway sees his opportunity to sneak in. As April accepts her fate and is ready to become the new guardian of the balance for the next 1000 years, the tower doesn't fulfill the ritual. Now what? Nothing's happening. You are right. Then it is as I suspected. What? What did you suspect? That you are not the one chosen to take my place in the tower. You are not the 13th Guardian. Perfect timing for Gordon Halloway to show up. He claims to be the next Guardian, but he doesn't feel well. His balance seems to be a little off. I can ignore this. It's so hot in here. Don't you feel it? The heat? I'm freezing. Maybe you should lie down for a minute or two. 
While he and Adrian are fighting, April tries to restore Holloway's balance with the talisman which she used to trap the Chaos Vortex. After restoring his balance, his whole personality changed. I... I'm... alive again. Y you gave me back my life. I did? You don't sound like yourself. Are you okay? I do sound like myself. And I'm better than I've ever been, April. I I'm whole again. So it worked? The joining of two halves? Magic and logic. Order and chaos. I'm in balance now. I am balance. And it's glorious. With his true self, he isn't under the influence of the Vanguard anymore. So it seems like the Vanguard failed once again. Gordon is now ready to begin his 1000 year long guardianship. After April's very long journey and finding out that she is not the new guardian, April has to find a new purpose in life. What am I doing now? Going back to school? Live like nothing has happened? Like I'm just a... a normal person? Well, it's a long way home. I'll figure it out before I get there. In the end, we get a hint from the narrator that Gordon Holloway was the last Guardian and both worlds are going to be reunited after all. But that's a different story. How strange it was to tell it again. To remember April Ryan. Even though the game was released in 1999, this is the perfect ending to reference the two other games. Dreamfall The Longest Journey from 2006 and Dreamfall Chapters from 2014. So turn in for the next game summaries to find out more about Stark, Acadia and The Balance. Thanks for watching. If you like my content, please share and subscribe.